What's up guys, Davey here from phonebuff.com and in this video I'm be doing a review on Android 4.2 Jellybean on the Nexus 4 over here. So basically I'm just going to be taking a look at what's new with 4.2. So first thing we'll start off with is the lock screen which now has widgets on it. So for example if I wanted my camera app, I would just swipe over to the right like that and boom my camera launches. Now that might not really excite you all that much considering that before you had the option to unlock to the left that basically opened the camera anyways. So what will excite you though is the fact that I have my messaging widget right over here, I have my song identifier widget, and I have my calendar widget. And if I wanted to add more widgets, I'd just swipe over to the left one more time, hit this plus sign, you can see the widgets I could actually choose from. And I only imagine this will grow over time. So I'll go ahead and exit out of here. Next thing you'll notice right away is the uh, time widget, or the clock widget, should I say. So this is actually new and it comes pre-installed. This is not a third party one. So you can see the UI actually looks different for the alarm app or the clock app. And not only that, you have the world clock capability now, which is pretty cool. And for the first time, now we have built-in timers and stopwatches, which before you always had to get from a third party. So pretty cool to see that Google incorporated that. And I imagine that will incorporate with Google now in the future. So we'll go ahead and take a look at the next feature, which is going to be the keyboard. So we'll tap on this note right here. So for example, if I wanted to type, you know, I have the same great keyboard from Android 4.1. I mean, it has a text prediction, offline dictation, all that good stuff. But now you have gesture sliding or gesture typing. So basically it kind of works like swipe. So for example, if I want to write uh, the quick brown fox, so it would work like that. Now notice that when I actually go over the words, um, it actually gives me a preview of what it thinks I'm going to type. So right now it's BRR, go over to here and I think it's bro go over here and it's brow and then finally brown. So what I found is it's actually more accurate for me at least because it gives me the previews because it gives me a better idea as far as what I'm actually doing. So that's a pretty cool uh, feature right here. Another thing is um, what it came built in. I'm not sure if it's something you could download right now, but it came built in with a emoji keyboard, which is called I W N N emoji. I -M -E. So I go to choose input method, see emoji input right here. And basically, I have a whole bunch of emojis I could actually choose from. I could press this down and go faces and smileys, artifacts, activities, etc. So that's a pretty cool little feature as well. We'll go ahead and back out of here and look at the notification shade. So what's different with the notification shade now is that you have quick settings instead of just a shortcut to the settings. So when you tap this guy, you're going to get your most commonly used shortcuts right over here. So I have my brightness. I have uh, you know, my carrier, my battery, airplane mode, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, etc. And what I've noticed is it actually changes at least the, this little bottom right icon. For example, right now I have an alarm set, it shows up. When I, if, I, if I were to turn off that alarm, this would actually disappear. So that's a pretty cool little feature. While we're here, might as well go into the settings and take a look at the Easter egg. So Android 4.2 Jelly Bean. So yeah, I mean, we'll go ahead and press this too. I know some of you guys want to see that. So we'll go ahead and back out of here and go on to the next feature, which is actually, you know what? I'll show you the, uh, the uh, new animations when I multitask. So for example, when I press this button over here, it kind of like jumps down into the multitasking window, which is pretty cool. And also since I opened Chrome, I might as well mention that it's actually now default, you know, before on 4.1, they had another browser and Chrome was basically a third party app, or not third, but you'd have to download it from the Play Store. Now it doesn't come with any browser but Chrome, so it actually you know, comes pre-installed, which is pretty cool. Uh, next feature is the Daydream, or the screensaver. So basically, I'll go to display and show you that really quick. So you see, they call it Daydream. Basically, it's kind of like a screensaver, so when you dock your phone or when you plug it in, you could actually set it to have this if you want. You could have your clock, Bean finger, colors, currents, photo frame, photo table, whatever. I actually like the bean flinger, which basically when you plug it in, this is what shows up. Pretty cool little touch. I mean, not necessarily something that's gonna change your experience, but just a nice touch. Um, we'll go ahead and back out of here. While we're here, we'll show you that it does have wireless display options now. So basically it's using a technology called Miracast and uh, it's made by the, uh, or supported by the Wi-Fi Alliance. Not a lot of devices out there have it, but basically what it does when you turn it on, it'll allow you to mirror what's on your phone onto like a big screen or a Blu-ray player or whatever it is. And um, it's kind of like Apple's AirPlay, but like I said, it's a technology that's pretty new right now, so it might grow in the future. And if it does, that would be great. Go on to the next one, which is going to be uh, the security features. So actually now, um, when you download an app, it'll verify the app. So we'll go to security, and you can see it says verify apps. 
So you can check it or uncheck it and basically it'll warn you before installing an app that may cause harm to your phone, which is definitely a plus. Uh, definitely got to like that. Go on to the next one, which is going to be the, where is it? Oh, magnif magnification uh, options. So if I go to accessibility, there it is, having trouble finding it. You can actually turn on the magnification gestures, which basically allows you, if you were to triple tap on something like that, it'll zoom in. So that's pretty cool to do. Also, if you triple tap and hold, it'll zoom in temporarily, and then you let go, it'll zoom out. So it's cool, but I've noticed if I left it on, it kind of makes it lag a little as far as you know your button presses, which I don't like. I mean, obviously, if you need the uh, zoom in ability, it's worth it. But for me, I turn it off. So we'll go ahead and turn it off right now because I don't want it to make me lag when I press button. So anyway, that is that. Um, what else is new is Google Now. So basically what Google Now does now is it will check your emails for flight information, for shipment tracking, for hotel reservations, and basically it'll populate in your cards, you know, in addition to all the great things that it does already. So that's a cool little feature. Um, and what else am I missing? One of the more major new features is the camera app on Android 4.2. So not only does it actually look different, it actually works a little bit differently too. So for example, if I wanted to get to my camera settings, instead of having to reach over you know, to the edges of the screen, which is kind of hard to do with these bigger screens, I can just tap anywhere in the screen and hold, and basically I have all my options. So for example, my, auto, or my exposure right here, front facing camera right here, worth mentioning too is now the camera app actually has HDR built in. I know that you know that's been available for a long time on third party UIs, but hasn't been so on stock Android. Now it is. If I want to change my flash settings right here, want to go to my settings, I can do it right there. So pretty cool. Um, while we're here, we might as well look at the next new feature, which is the uh, photosphere mode. So if I tap this camera button, I could do you know, a regular shot, uh, video, panorama, or photosphere. Now when you tap on photosphere, Basically what you can do is make like a Google Street View 360 picture. So it's not just like panorama, it's more than that. So for example, you can see it's almost like on a little virtual reality type uh, screen right now and I'll move it around. Now it's kind of hard to do because I don't really have a lot of space to work with, but we'll go ahead and take a look at one I did on a soccer field. So we'll go ahead and tap on this really quick and you can see um, I did a 360 view of the soccer field at night. You can see it's not necessarily completely 100% accurate. I mean, it did kind of miss on these lines a little bit. Maybe I was moving around too much with the camera. I try to stay still though, but nonetheless, I mean, this is awesome. It took me a while to do this. I mean, it takes a bunch of pictures to do this, but a full 360 look at, you know, where you are. So I can imagine this could be really useful. I mean, not only is it cool, but I'm sure a lot of people and a lot of business professionals could use this. One example could be like a real estate professional. They want to, you know, take a picture of a house. Well, no better way to do it than this. So that's pretty cool. Um, we'll go ahead and back out of here and also show you another thing within the camera or more specifically the camera, you know, or the uh, gallery is the photo editing option. So now it's kind of more like Instagram I mean, you have a whole bunch of different filters you could apply. So I'm sure a lot of you Instagrammers out there are going to love that. Um, you could add borders and whatnot to your pictures. So that's pretty cool. And then um, you still have the same options as far as what you had with ICS and uh, 4.1, which is, you know, ability to crop straight in, do a mirror. So basically you could flip it over like that and change the uh, exposure settings, all that good stuff. So that's another cool option with Android 4.2 and definitely, you know, a welcomed new addition to an already, you know, feature packed OS. Another thing I noticed when I was playing around with the settings was the cell broadcast. So if we go under more, now you have a new option for cell broadcast. Basically, it'll alert you for emergencies. So you can actually check them or uncheck them if you want, like amber alerts, severe threats, extreme threats, etc. So pretty cool to have that. Um, oh, the uh, app drawer now shows more icons. So if you were to take a look at the Galaxy Nexus running 4.1, you can see now we have more content displayed, which is awesome. You have high resolution displays, you have big displays, might as well show more icons at once. So it you know, basically reduces the amount of scrolling you have to do from uh, page to page. So that's definitely a nice touch, but that's pretty much it. I'm, hopefully I'm not missing anything, I'm sure I am. Um, if you guys have any questions on it, just leave a comment down below. Overall, I have to say I definitely like the update, you know, it's definitely one that's welcomed. It's not necessarily, you know, a huge update. It's just, I mean, that's why they kept the name Jelly Bean. It's just an incremental one, but definitely one that is much appreciated. 
And uh, yep, that's pretty much it for me in this video. If you guys found it helpful or if you liked it, please hit the thumbs up button. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel because I'll be doing a whole bunch more coverage on not only the Nexus 4, but Android 4.2 Jelly Bean 2. Thank you for watching.